Hi, it's Mr. Anderson. Today I'm going to talk about the AP Biology test. Uh, the reason I do that is if you have a better understanding of how the test is put together and what you're going to experience on that day, you're simply going to do better on the test. And so, uh, first of all, if you've never taken an AP test before, you're going to get an envelope in the mail this summer, and it's going to show you what your score is. Um, this is a distribution of the scores on the 2010 test. And so you can see here, um, scores vary from 1 to 5. If you get anything 3 or higher, that means that you've passed the AP bio test, and anything lower than that means that you failed. And sc so a score of 1 or 2 is failing, and 3, 4, 5 is going to be passing. You can see here that last year 49.2 percent of the people got a three or higher that means 49.2 percent of the people passed that means the majority of people actually failed and we don't want you to end up in that boat and so your your goal is to get as high a score as you possibly can but in that envelope all you're going to see is your score you're never going to know if you did better on multiple choice or how that essay went and so that's actually a good idea um, and so all you'll get is a score and your goal remember is to get the highest score that you possibly can Okay, how's the test set up? Well, when you get there, there are two portions to it. Uh, the first portion takes 80 minutes, and that's going to be 100 multiple choice questions. That's worth 60% of your grade, and so most of your grade is actually going to come out of that first portion of the test. The way they do it is they take all the people who take the test. It'll be 180,000 people. They look at the distribution of all the scores, and then they just cut off and say, here's our fives and here's our fours, and here's our threes. And so they just figure that out uh, based on how you compare against everybody else. But they don't know that until you've actually taken the test. Know this, if you do well on the multiple choice portion, you're going to do well on the test. You then get a 10-minute period where they're going to give you the questions um, to the essay portion or the free response portion. You get 10 minutes to read them and take notes on that. And then you get 90 minutes to actually write your essay question uh, or your essay questions. And so you get about 22 minutes on each of those. So multiple choice tips. Uh, the multiple choice test will look like this. You'll get a, a booklet. And it's going to have a series of questions inside it. There's going to be 100 questions. Um, you can write in the booklet, but you're just going to put your answers on a uh, bubble sheet. So you're going to fill in the bubble sheet. And so here's some tips I've come up with that could maybe help. Number one, study. In other words, you want to be studying in the month coming up to the AP test. You don't want to be cramming the night before. It's simply not going to help, and it's probably going to stress you out a little bit. That being said, you can study. And, and so what I would do is encourage you to get a study book. I like the AP, the uh, Cliff Notes one. A lot of students have that. There's a bunch of different other, uh, of, of other ones. Um, the one thing that kind of ties all these together is they have abbreviated information on each of the different topics, um, but they also have practice tests that are important. And so I think taking practice tests is also important, but you want to do that in the last week, uh, right before you're actually getting ready to take the test. If we get to the actual multiple choice questions itself, you get 45 seconds on each one. Some will be really easy, and don't be tricked by that. Some will be incredibly hard, and so kind of budget your time, about 45 seconds per question. I would encourage you to use a process of elimination. In other words, since you can write in your book, cross off ones that are clearly wrong, and so you can pare it down and make an educated guess on the end. And then watch out for the reverse questions. What does that mean? AP Biology, the test is notorious for asking reverse questions. In other words, all of the following are found in a eukaryotic cell, except, and if you didn't see the word except, then you're going to jump in and circle nucleus right away and you're going to miss that question. So watch out for those reverse questions, circle it, or somehow write a note to yourself. So what do they look like? Well, these are some uh, old AP questions. Uh, you get 100 questions, 80 minutes. The first ones are going to be of the normal variety. And so this would be a normal AP bio question. So the first 60% of the questions are going to be like this. Um, I'm not going to go through each question, but what you want to do is you want to go through it you want to cross out ones that are clearly wrong, and then you want to circle the one that is correct. So that'd be a basic question. The next ones are going to be matching type questions. Matching type questions, what you'll get is a series of answers that could be right, and then you'll have a number of questions after that that match up to the top. Be cautious of these matching questions. When you were in elementary, remember, one matched up with every other one. It's not like that. And so, again, it's notorious to have, like in this one, tropical rainforest E is going to be the right answer for the first question, but it's also going to be the right answer for the second one. 
That looks like Tyga is going to be the right answer for that. And so watch out for those questions. And then the next ones are going to be based on experiments. Um, not only the labs that we do, however, an understanding of those labs is super important. What you'll get for the last questions are uh, usually a graph or a summary of data. And then you're going to have a series of questions that are based on that um, data. And so the right answer for this would be C. But you're really going to have to understand how to read a graph if you hope to get questions like this. Again, what you want to use, process of elimination, move with pace. I wouldn't keep questioning yourself if you want to, if you're like, I don't know if that's right or not. Just go with your gut instinct, move on to the next question. Don't get stressed out about it. Okay, let's get to the free response or the essay question. Essay questions, you're going to get 10 minutes to read the questions. Um, that'll come in a, you'll have a little pamphlet that looks like this. It'll have all four questions in it. Um, you can see this is one of my old students, and she not only uh, looked at each of the questions, but she wrote herself tons and tons and tons of notes. Uh, and so when she was ready to write after those 10 minute period of time, then she was able to get busy. Um, so there's going to be four questions. Those questions are based on, the first one is based on molecules and cells. Next, genetics, evolution, and then there's going to be two questions based on organisms and populations. What does that mean? Two of the questions are going to come from the material that we covered in the first semester. Two of the questions are going to come from the material that we covered in the sem second semester. Oops, it was semester two, we'll call that. Um, know this, however, that one of the questions is going to be directly tied to a lab. Um, and so one of these four questions is going to have a lab component to it. Okay, so here's my tips for free response. First of all, read the question. Make sure you read the question and understand what's, what the question is asking. After that, you want to read the question again and make sure you understand what the, the question is asking. I would even encourage you to maybe read it again and make sure you understand what the question is asking. That's the most important thing that you really understand what it's, what it's asking. As you start to write an essay, this is going to be an essay unlike most essays you've written. Don't worry about grammar. Don't worry about spelling. Don't worry about word choice. Don't worry about an introduction paragraph when they grade it they're just looking for if you answered the question and so don't worry about anything else except answering the question budget your time you get about 22 minutes to each for each question so you want to make sure in your book that you leave yourself space after you're done so you can come back to that and add material let's say you're doing part a but you want to move on to part B leave yourself a little bit of space in there and so it looks neat um, Make sure that you understand the direction words, and I'll talk about that on the next slide. In other words, in each question, there's going to be a series of words that direct you to answer that question in a specific way, and it's, and it's vital that you understand what that question's asking. If it were to ask you to compare contrast and you actually describe, you're going to miss all of the points, so watch out for that. And then finally, I love the Cliff Notes books because they give you 15 essays. They kind of went through the last essays and they looked at which ones are asked most commonly. And so those 15 ones, and you can pause the video when you get there, write those down. Those are important. You really want to have standard understandings of each of those essay questions. Okay, what I did is I went through the last 10 years of essay questions and I looked for those direction words and then threw them into Wordle and this is what I got. So these are questions that you could get like to discuss or to label or design or to compare and so if you don't understand what these words mean you could really screw up on that question. I then looked at how often they're used however and what I found is these ones show up over and over again. So you have to know how to identify. So identify is to indicate. So if I were to say identify the parts of a cell, that means to simply list the parts of the cell. Um, if I were to ask you to discuss, discuss is a pretty open-ended uh, kind of a term. So if you discuss something, you're going to examine all the different aspects of that. And so if I were to just say, discuss eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells, man, that's pretty open-ended and you can go in a lot of different directions uh, to discuss. And that means you can get a lot of different points. Next is to describe. Describe is to characterize. If I said describe, mm, describe what a plant is, then you're going to give all the characteristics of a plant. And then finally to explain, which you can see this is the biggest word, it's the one used most often. Explain is to make it understandable, so to answer the question. Now what ties all of these together, all four of these together, is that they are fairly open-ended. That means when they ask you a question, you're not going to just answer it in one sentence. You could 
would, but you're only going to get one point for that. So what do I mean by points? Well, essays are graded on a 10-point scale. So your goal, if you get a perfect score on an essay, and there's four of them, is to get a 10 out of 10. Now, it's graded by humans, and humans have 10 fingers, and so when they grade it, they're simply looking at how many points you get, and then they're going to give you a score based on how you did. And so you want to get as many points as you can, and if you understand what it is to be an open-ended question, that's going to help a little bit. So these are those must-know essay questions. In other words, these are the ones that come up over and over again. They're not going to ask you these specific questions, but they have been asked over the last 10 years, and so you want to make sure that you have a good pat standard answer for each of these questions. So let's look at what an actual essay question might look like. This is one that was asked in 2010 and so what you have here is a forest and we've got some annual plants here and those annual plants, whoops, annual plants over time are moving towards hardwood, hardwood trees. Now this is actually one of those Cliff Notes 15. This is the idea of succession. So let's look at the question itself. Diagram shows succession of communities. You can just list right away. Here's one of those dangerous words, discuss. Here's describe and explain and three. And then here's discuss again, all right? And so I can, I can pretty much go through this and figure out how many points you could get for this. This first one, it's just telling you what happens to the biodiversity, so you're gonna get two points for that. This one, there's three with both describe and explain, so that's gonna be worth at least six points. This one down here is discuss two things, so that's gonna be four points. And so if you were to just read this first one, let's say part B, and just answer that with one sentence, you're gonna get hammered on the essay. And so let's look at how this was actually graded. I don't want to go through the specifics. However, if you were to pause it right here and write an essay, then you could look at the next two slides and see how it's actually graded. So this would be part A. You could have gotten a maximum of two points, but you get a point for each of these bulleted points. If you simply just rephrase the question and say shrubs become hardwoods, you're not going to get any points for just rephrasing the question. But for each of these bullets, you get one point, and so you could get a maximum of two points in part A. When you write the essay, you want to make sure this was question four, if I remember right. And so you would write for 4A, and then you're just going to write it out in sentence form. Don't use bullets, but you're going to write it out in sentence form and answer that essay question. You can see for this first part, part A, you can actually get a maximum of two. Let's look at the second one. This one they're asking you for three ways and then to describe and explain. Um, and now un to understand this, you really have to understand what the word abiotic means. So those are non-living. Um, but for this one, you can get a maximum of six points. And this is not an exhaustive list. It keeps going and going and going and going and going. So if you just said you're going to decrease in the temperature because there's going to be shading from the trees, you could actually get two points right there. Um, or if you talked about the pH or the availability of light. And so, again, make sure that you answer it in an open-ended way, knowing that if they list, to list three, describe and explain, you better do that. Um, don't worry about putting wrong information, but you want to make sure that you put the right information right up front. And then the last one talks specifically about succession. This is primary and secondary succession. And you got two points for each of those, or two ways you could get, so that this was a described question if I remember right, so you could get a total of four points on this one. And so uh, when they graded this, they said to get a 10, you have to at least get some of the points out of each. But again, you could get six points out of that middle portion and get a pretty high score. What do I mean by high score? This test when this one was given last year, the average across the country was a 2.72 out of 10. What does that mean? If you understand how essays are asked and that you don't just try to answer it in a few sentences, you can pick up a ton of points in a lot of different areas and that can push you way above that bell-shaped curve of how people are doing on those essays. And so that can push you into that range of uh, four or five. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to get the highest score that you can. Um, it's a test, and so the one way you can make sure that you're going to do bad on the test is to get stressed out and get worried about it. Just be confident, be calm, and just know what you know, uh, and don't be afraid of what you don't. And so, uh, good luck.